In this guide, we'll create a simple server using a Raspberry Pi Pico W. The server will be accessible from within a local Wi-Fi network and can be used to serve pages, read sensors, and control hardware. In our case, we'll drive an LED and read the state of a button. While quite simple, this server code is a great foundation for really useful projects like our Wi-Fi connected garage door controller based on a Pico W. To follow along, it's best if you're already familiar with connecting a Pico W to Wi-Fi and we have a guide linked in the article to get you started there. You'll also need the following hardware. A Pico W with pins already soldered, an LED with current limiting resistor, a button and a breadboard. Let's get started. Plug your Pico into the breadboard right at the top so that the first pin is on row one. Connect the cathode of the LED to the bottom left pin on the Pico. That's on row 20 on the breadboard and the short lead is going to row 21. Use a resistor to bridge row 21 all the way up to the third pin from the bottom on the Pico. That would be row 18. So we now have GP16 driving an LED and going through a resistor to ground. I'll plug a button into row 30 and connect row 30 to row 20 on the right hand side, that's GP16, and connect the other side of the button, row 32, to ground on the Pico at row 18. And then connect to your computer with a USB cable. It's best to check that our hardware is working before proceeding. You can find a hardware test script in the article that will flash the LED slowly when the button is not pressed and flash it quickly while the button is being held down. If you observe that behavior, you're right to proceed. If you have any problems, then let us know in the comments at the bottom of the article. Find the example code in the article and copy that into a new funny script. Near the top of the script, enter your Wi-Fi credentials and run the script. When we run the script, we can see some information in the shell. We are waiting for a connection, and then when we connect to the Wi Fi network, the Pico W responds with connected and then tells us its IP address on the local network. Copy that IP address and navigate to it in your favorite browser. I'm going to use Firefox. How's that? We have a simple web page with a heading and some text. So we have the Pico W HTTP server. We have the text, hello world. And then we have what looks like a status message. The LED is off and the button is not pressed. First things first, let's see if the button is working. I'll hold down the button and then refresh the page. And here we can see the text has changed to button is pressed. If I release the button and refresh again, we see the button is not pressed. But what about the LED? To control the LED, we're going to use a query. Append that address with a slash question mark, LED equals on. And just like that, we can see the LED has lit up. And of course we can turn the LED off by saying LED equals off. If you experience this error at any time after running your script, say multiple times, just power cycle your Pico, reconnect with Thonny, and rerun the script. Let's take a look at the code. The content of the web page is defined by the HTML variable near the top of the script. And you can see this is just a multi line string in Python that contains a bunch of simple HTML code to create a web page. Here we can see a title, we can see a heading, there's a paragraph. And since this is a Python script, we can also inject variable content by using formatting. Here we've got the syntax for formatted strings so we can change the content of what appears in the page. And that is how we can update the page with the LED and button status. At the top of the script, we import the necessary modules for networking and controlling GPIO. And then we set up the LED on pin 15 and the button on pin 16. We enable Wi-Fi and connect to our Wi-Fi network. There's the HTML page definition. And then we attempt to connect to the Wi Fi network. After some error handling, if a connection was not successful, we open a socket. This is like the endpoint where communication occurs on the Pico. And then we have the infinite loop for the server code. 
we scan for connecting clients and copy any requests into a request variable, which we can then print to the shell. And you can see that down here, there's quite a lot going on in this request. There's a lot of metadata about the browser type and settings, but importantly, at the start of the request, we have our query LED equals on. We can use the dot find method to scan the request for this text. Here we're looking for LED equals on and LED equals off. And what's returned by find is actually the position in the string where it found this text. So counting from zero in the request, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is where the query starts for LED equals on. And so that is what will be loaded into the LED underscore on variable. Then we just check if that's equal to eight. And if so, we can turn the LED on. So we have a request received by the Pico W and the Pico W looks for the valid query in a valid position of that request. And the same is true if we were to submit LED equals off. Further down, we update the string that displays the state of the LED. And we also check if the button is pressed and we update a string for that state as well. Finally, we concatenate the LED state string and the button state string and format that into our HTML variable. So now we have variable strings going into that HTML variable and that is what gets sent as the response to the client, which is our computer. We send that string as a response. And remember, that string is both the HTML code that also contains the status of the button and the LED. Now that example established that it's possible to use queries to send information to our server, like the intended state of the LED. This is functional, but a little cumbersome. To do anything, you would have to type out what you want to happen. Wouldn't it be nice if our PicoW served a web page that presents some kind of button interface for controlling our hardware? Find the Remix example where we will take a new version of the HTML variable. Copy that new HTML code and replace the existing HTML variable. So I'll just highlight all of that and paste over the top. Rerun the script and navigate to the IP address of your Pico W. Now we have a much more friendly HTML form with two buttons to control the LED. Clicking one of these buttons will automatically send the corresponding query to the Pico. See here I've clicked on and the LED has come on. When I click off, the LED turns off. That's a much nicer user experience. If we take a look at that new HTML, we can see the name of each button. Here we have our green button with the name LED and the value attached to that button is on. Likewise for the red button, it is also named LED and it has the value off. So when we click these buttons, it will send LED equals and then the value we wish to send on or off. These button classes are defined a little higher up and that just does some nice styling like setting the background color and text formatting. So where to from here? This simple HTTP server is a really practical starting point for other projects. Controlling an LED and reading a button are very simple examples but this hardware can be replaced by any sensor or actuator that you can interface with a Raspberry Pi Pico W. For example, we made a Wi-Fi connected garage door controller with minimal changes to what's shown in this guide. We encourage you to stay curious and keep experimenting. There's additional resources at the bottom of the article. There's also a document which will help you make an asynchronous web server, which handles connections in a much more robust way. And if you make something cool from this guide or have any questions, please leave a comment below. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, happy making.